Hello and welcome to this video which is a revision summary for the second unit in AQA P3. I, you might recognise some of these uh, bits of paper I have here because I've used, I've gone through all the exam papers um, first and I use these when I was explaining what you need to know for the exam papers. I then compiled them into a revision summary, gone through the textbook and checked that nothing's missed out and I only had to add in one piece of paper. Um, and that covers everything you need to know from the textbook. So I've told you this before, but I really believe the best way for you to revise is to go through the exam papers, look at the mark schemes, learn what the examiners are looking for. Um, and if you do that, you will know everything that you need to for your exams. So let's start. Um, you need to know that centre of mass is where an object's mass is thought to be concentrated. In P3, they're really going to be picking up on your language. So I'm really going to make sure that I emphasise the words that are important. And here is where it's thought to be concentrated. To make something more stable, you need a low centre of mass and a wide base. I just want to point out to you these up here are where I've um, made more detailed videos where you can go and look up more information about um, each topic if you're confused about anything that I say. So for a symmetrical shape, finding the centre of mass is lovely and easy. It's the centre of symmetry. If they ask a question like this in the exam, you're not going to have to work out the centre of symmetry exactly. It is judged by eye. Working out the centre of mass for an irregular shaped object is slightly more difficult. You need to make two holes in your irregular shaped object and hang it off a rod. Here I've got my rod attached to a clamp stand. And this is a plumb line, which is a line with a weight on the end of it. You need to have them both swinging freely. And once they come to rest, draw a line down following the plumb line. Repeat for the other hole and where they cross is the centre of mass. You should be able to balance this on a pencil. If we have, for example, a tractor on a hill, if its centre of mass is between the wheelbase, it's going to be stable. If it's not, if the centre of mass falls over here, this is when you're going to get things that are toppling over. So pendulums now. You should know that a longer pendulum has a longer time period and a shorter pendulum has a shorter time period. This is the equation that we're going to be using. So time in seconds divided by one, one divided by the frequency, which is in hertz. This is for one rotation. So the exam question, if it gives you a number or asks you for a number in 10 rotations, you have to make sure you scale it up. And here is just a quick example for you. Okay, moving on to circular motion and centripetal force. This is a really tricky concept to get your head around. So you need to know that velocity is speed with direction and acceleration is a change of velocity, which can either be a change in speed or a change in direction. Now, when we have something move around in a circle, its inclination is to go in a straight line. But if we're moving around a circle, for example, if we're swinging something over our heads or if it's fairground mud, we are forcing it to change direction. The force is going to be acting into the middle the acceleration is going to be acting into the middle. Because the direction is constantly changing, the velocity is constantly changing, and because the velocity is constantly changing, they're constantly accelerating, even if they're moving at a steady speed. So you should know that centripetal force increases if there's an increase in speed, if there's an increase in mass, or if there's a decrease in the radius of the circle. Moving on to moments now, this is the equation we're going to be using. Our moment is in newton metres, our force is in newtons, and our distance is in metres. And this is the perpendicular distance from the pivot. They might give you this distance, and they might give you the distance of the um, lever or spanner or whatever it is they're using. If they give you both distances, you have to use the perpendicular one. This is a situation where they're really going to be testing whether you can actually use the right numbers in your maths. And here is just a quick example for you. You should know that longer lever you have, you're going to have a larger moment. So here I have two levers of different lengths, both of which are implying force of two newtons to. So this is our equation, moment equals force times distance. Whenever you do a maths question, I want you to write down the equation, write down your working, give your answer and write the units. If you forget your calculator in the exam, you can still get marks if you write down the working. 
So um, with our short lever here, we have a distance of four meters and a force of two newtons. So two times four is eight newton meters. I've increased the distance of the lever here to eight meters. Same force, two. Two times eight is 16 newton meters. So a longer lever equals a larger moment. Uh, here we have a moment that's in balance. Exactly the same maths here. It's just slightly more complicated. So you need to know that the clock clockwise moment is going to be equal to the anti-clockwise moment if something is in balance. Same equation that we used before. And what we need to find out here is the weight of primrose. So we have the force of something being lifted up and the distance and the distance that primrose is from the pivot. So first of all, we work out the clockwise moment. Then we, when we know what the anti-clockwise moment is, we can use math and manipulate that to work out the weight. In a hydraulic system, you need to know that liquids can't be squashed. They are a word they love to see, incompressible. And this is the equation we're going to be using. So pressure, and I've seen this written in the exam in a couple of ways. Newtons per millimetre squared, or the much more common way, is in pascals. Um, the force is always in newtons. The area, they seem to write it in a different way for every single exam paper, but the traditional area is metres squared. And you need to know that as we increase the force, we're increasing the pressure. The pressure on a liquid is going to be in every single direction. So this is um, our hydraulics, it's a force multiplier. We are gonna have the same pressure um, inside here, even though here we have two different areas. And here's just a quick example for you to look at.